On this episode of SF Actual, we'll be discussing basic land navigation starting out with the Linstatic Compass. Let's do this. All right, YouTube, SF Actual here. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into this uh, episode that we're going to be doing on land navigation. Uh, multiple episodes coming out with this. And starting out, we're going to be going over the lens that it compass. But just do a quick breakdown of what I'm going to be teaching on in these four parts. Is This is directly from uh, the U.S. Army and what they teach on land navigation. And uh, we'll be breaking it down, going over what's important to just learn basic land navigation, moving into intermediate, advanced, and then eventually expert. Uh, today will be about Linsthetic Compass, but in the basic uh, episodes, we'll be learning about topographical map on how to read them, and then land and map association. Um, I'll also be discussing about um, pace count and drift course. Uh, some things that you can actually get out and about and go ahead and get these down uh, under your belt. So uh, just back it out real quick just to show uh, why we learn land navigation. It's training and practice on foot provides everyday navigation so we don't get lost benefits. Not having to use a GPS, not having to use anything um, electronic that we can take a map, we can take a compass and a protractor, we can get out there and, and get some work done. Uh, you know, tracking present location, determining distance, sense of direction, and how to read a topographical map. Um, that's what we're going to be digging into. Uh, moving over into the compass itself, uh, this is not a normal compass that a lot of people might have used. There are different ones out there. Uh, this one is something that was designed um, for the military or that the military adopted that's been used for a very long time. <clears throat> and Reasons being is precision, durability, and hyper-accurate bearing land uh, navigation. And direct artillery fire was another big one that we'll talk about in meals in just a minute. Um, but it's preferred by the military's battle-tested shock and water and sandproof, functional for 50, negative 50 degrees to 150 degrees. Um, another big thing is the lens static. You can just point and shoot one target and immediately move on to the next. Uh, the luminous lights allow for nav uh, navigation in low light conditions and nav uh, night navigation. Uh, it's equipped with a magnifying lens, sight wire, uh, dial graduations in both degrees and mils. Uh, copper induction, another big thing. The copper induction dampening system, uh, this slows the rotation of the magnet without the use of liquid. So, nice thing about it is if you ever cracked it by accident, it's not leaking liquid and then now it's not working properly. Uh, so, another key thing. Now, stepping into genuine versus imitation. Uh, the Kaminga Lensthetic Compass is the one that the military purchases. You can see the link down here if you ever want to buy one. Um, this is what has been tested. It meets, uh, you know, mill spec and tolerance on the accuracy. Um, you know, all the, the, the materials that's used out of it, this is the type of compass that the military buys. Now, you can buy a cheap one, and it might work uh, pretty decent. It might be pretty accurate, something you can work with. And, you know, if you're just getting into this, you're, you're about to go into the military and you're wanting to test this and just get a cheap one. Um, if you're wanting to play around and see, you know, just just playing around out in the in the woods somewhere that you're familiar with buy a cheap one learn learn the basics learn the mechanics of how it works but if you want to buy a real one Kaminga is the real one if you want the real deal one thing I will say if you can take anything out of everything that I'll be teaching on these episodes is the key thing is um, mistakes in land nav will expound on each other and what I mean by that is if you make one mistake uh, reading the wrong degrees, heading in the wrong direction. Uh, you know, when you're moving, you you think you've made it so many hundred meters, and you've only made it, you know, so many hundred meters uh, less. So, say you were trying to walk 500 meters, and you only walk 300, and now you're supposed to shoot a new azimuth that takes you at a 90 degree turn, and you start walking that way. They're expounding on themselves. You're going to get lost even more, and you're going to have trouble getting back. So, we want to make sure. 
anything that we have the ability to be accurate on, to be precise on, that's what we want to do. So buying a good compass, I would highly recommend. But again, if it's something that um, you're wanting to practice with, just get the cheap one. So parts and features, we'll jump over this real quick because we'll be uh, discussing a lot on it on some other pieces. But you got your sight dots. Uh, that works through tritium. So that's another thing that um, Kaminga has is tritium. Um, it's a chemical you know, concoction that uh, basically lights up for about 25 years. It does not need to be charged at all. It just lights up. You open the thing up and it's, it's looming. A lot of people put them on um, their pistols, on their sight post. Um, now, cheaper ones, you're going to have to charge it with a light. Uh, not a big deal. Just remember when you're out in the dark that uh, li uh, bright light, or I'm sorry, white light is going to overwhelm your rods and your cones, and it's going to har be hard to have night vision at that point. So you want to work a red headlamp or a medical blue headlamp or something like that. But anyway, getting off topic. Um, big things to learn here is the luminous heading that's what lights up behind the degrees uh, the bezel line that is something that actually moves with the bezel we'll discuss how you can use that um, the magnetic arrow that is what always points magnetic north so be mindful there's true north grid north and magnetic north so uh, anytime you pick up a topographical map if it's a proper map it's going to show you true north it's going to show you grid north which is what the map is working on and then magnetic north uh, differences and you'll just have to know that difference to subtract or add um, to account for that. Uh, the fixed index line that's a black line that's always pointing to your sight wire. Um, that sight wire is what you're going to point at an object to say this is where I'm wanting to go and what I'm wanting my azimuth to be on. Um, the floating dial, the bezel, uh, sighting slot that's what you're actually lining up the sight uh, wire on and then you have a lens um, and then in a little bit we'll discuss what the bottom does and what these numbers do um, so here just talking real quick uh, the granulated straight edge of the upper half of the standard is one and fifty thousand scale map ruler um, so in the military we use one and fifty thousand square map um, topographical maps uh, it works by meters every grid square is a thousand meters by a thousand meters um, so this compass is designed that you can actually use that if you're needing to count if you don't have a protractor with you. Uh, looking at the base real quick, uh, things to take note of is the bezel ring, 360 degree rotation is 120 clicks, so each click is 3 degrees. We're only worried about the red, <clears throat> which is uh, degrees. Uh, the black is mills, and that is used when you're doing a call for fire and artillery stuff. We're not trying to be that uh, precise. So we're wanting to use red in the degrees. Um, moving on, you can see here is the red ring, which I just mentioned about being degrees, is there's 360 degrees in a circle, distance between red marks. So distance between each red mark is five degrees. The distance between the big marks is 10 degrees, and the distance between the numbers is 20 degrees. So we have five, we have 10, and then we have a full 20. All right, back to what I was just talking about over here um, on the uh, the side of it that has the broken down measurements. Um, you do have approximately one inch is every 13 ticks, so you can count here and get to 13. That's one inch if you need that. One centimeter is every five, and again, this is broken down to be used with a one in 50,000 square mile, I mean, uh, square map. Uh, Another thing to take note of, about 100 meters is about 107 yards. So, uh, you know, the way we would use that, we work in meters. Military works in meters is my point I'm trying to get across. But if you had to convert that into yards, it's 107 yards. Um, the rear sight post, uh, you know, this is has a magnifying glass to easily see the degrees on the, on the ring itself. And then the sight slot that's used for targeting where you're trying to point at so handling the compass uh, you know this kind of this has got some good stuff about you know you want to take care of it you want to make sure things are bent you want to make sure things are not broken um, I will say if you are trying to purchase one from a um, like a, a, a surplus store Army Navy surplus store you need to look and make sure it's not broken uh, we don't know the history, we don't know how it got there, but if you're not buying it brand new, um, you could be picking up one that might not be that accurate. 
Uh, you want to discard any type of compass more than three degrees. So that's something if you have it in your uh, possession for a while and it's getting out of tolerance that bad. Um, you know, or while you're checking one out at a Navy surplus store, you know, show it to them, tell them that it's out, uh, past three degrees that you believe and, uh, or just don't even bother picking that one up. Things that can affect it is medical and elect uh, metal and electricity. So these are things to be mindful of. 55 meters for high tension wires can affect the compass. 10 meters for your truck, your car, barbed wire, two meters for a hunting rifle, Half a meter for knife, flashlight, binoculars, and camera. Centimeters can be a belt buckle, paper clip, and even jewelry ring on your finger. Um, what I will say on this, if you're wanting to test that, is you need to have everything off, belt buckle all of it, and uh, do a shot, do an azimuth check, and see what that is at a tree, at, at a distance, whatever. Then, if you're using this for hunting, if you're using this for backpacking, what have you, um, put all the stuff that you would be wearing on and then do another azimuth check standing in the same spot and looking at the same tree and see if it throws off the compass at all. If not, great. If it does, be mindful of that. Um, this just talks about visual inspection, which I already hit, and then maintenance. You know, think about salt water will corrode this stuff, get it where the bezel doesn't want to spin. Um, you know, clean it with fresh water, let it dry off, try to keep... Uh, dirt and grime off of it the if you buy the real one even the cheap ones I believe come with a good case so you know keep it in the case as much as you can but they're pretty durable um, calibration um, you know this is something I'm not trying to get you heavily into it's just making sure you buy one that's working well and you're not having to get heavily into calibration so how the sight on the lens that compass works and then we'll be done um, this is just remember an army video, uh, army PowerPoint presentation. So here you go with this picture. The compass to cheek technique is used almost exclusively for sighting. Uh, so what this guy is doing, he has the uh, compass held flat. He has his index finger running along the side of it. He has his thumb down in the thumb loop uh, that's in the bottom, and he is placing his thumb and uh, <coughs> palm right up against his cheek. And that is called the compass to cheek method. Um, you, it, it, the best way to think of it is think about if you're shooting a rifle, you want to do a, a good cheek weld, the same cheek weld every time. So you're taking any variables of you being different out, and then it's just due to the rifle. Same thing with this. You want to take all the variables of yourself out, and now it's just a compass that could be behaving properly or not. Um, so we're going to look at a few pictures where you can see this, but just practice it a few times and it's real easy, not hard at all. Uh, so what he's doing here, he is looking through the uh, sight slot, he's looking through the sight wire, and he is pointing at a tree. And at the same time, he is beginning to look down while he's holding that, and he is looking at what his azimuth is towards that tree. And here would be a shot of what you would see if you were pointing that. See this index line that runs with the sight wire is what you're going off of. So this is 340, 341, somewhere in there. Again, just reiterating, reading the uh, heading and then reading the uh, target. So here's some great pictures where they're showing what that would look like. So you have your sight wire, you have your sight slot. He's got that, he's got his index line and right here he's able to see 65 degrees. So again, on here, they just say, want to say worth repeating. The compass to cheek technique is very important that you want to make sure you're doing it properly. So in this case, he's doing it right. He's got his uh, right hand right here pressed against his cheek and he's putting his eye up. It's flat. That looks right. Same thing with here. He's got his hand pressed into his cheek. He's got it flat and level. That looks right. So this guy is just kind of holding it or girl, sorry. Um, and uh, she's just kind of letting it float there and she's probably not touching her face very well you can see that it's almost in the center of her face so if she's looking at this sight wire she could be pointing at some other tree and not getting a very dedicated reading remember these little things are important because if you make a mistake they're going to expound on themselves uh, right here good placement good cheek weld right here good cheek weld this guy Again, he's got it placed on his face. He knows that eye is perfectly in the slot to the wire. Good cheek weld. 
right here he's floating it he's got metal up here um, that could be affecting it and messing up the compass he's not doing a cheek weld at all or touching his face uh, this guy is doing it right this guy is definitely away from his face and this could totally be wrong um, this guy's doing it wrong just holding it there so that is the compass the cheek method now there is one other method that you can use it's called the center hold method and the way that works is um, open the cover and you're gonna fold it straight out and you can see here he is putting both of his index fingers right up against the compass on both sides and he is locking his elbows into his side and what you're doing is you're turning your entire body um, you're not gonna turn the compass in your hand you're gonna turn your body and keep that compass um, parallel or perpendicular however you want to say it uh, with you that it's pointing straight forward and the reason what this center hold method is for is just for fast use pulling it out so say you get a good azimuth um, you you get it marked out on your map you know where you're gonna be walking and you know generally you're supposed to be walking 92 degrees that's what this one is for you're pulling it out real quick you're doing a check you're seeing that okay I'm continuing on 92 degrees 92 degrees 92 degrees even though you're not pulling it up and doing the um, cheek method uh, this is a good one and it's definitely got its uh, its reason the way to use this one is uh, the bezel ring and the bezel line and why this is so important so what you would do here in this case is that index line does not move that index line is wired to match up with the sight wire um, you want to find what azimuth you're supposed to be walking you would take it and you would point it um, at your target uh, I would prefer doing the cheek method and while you're holding it in that position you need to figure out where the north arrow is pointing um, at that point just take your fingers and turn this bezel ring until this luminous sight and this luminous sight on your magnetic uh, arrow line up once that lines up you are set that um, that is the degrees you're wanting to walk and all you have to do now is line these up so the way that works is once that's completed once you close it up you got it back in your pocket and you're walking and you're wanting to do a check on in this case an example of 25 degrees you're wanting to see am I still walking roughly 25 degrees all you do is pull it out put your two index fingers right on the side of it lock your elbows in take a look down while it's flat and line up those two um, bezel lines if those bezel lines line up with the, oh, that bezel line to the north arrow you're walking generally in the 25 degrees that's how it works real quick and accurate um, next step is going over topographical maps so we're going to stop here uh, I appreciate you guys watching this and I hope you watch the rest of the episodes as we dig into land navigation and until I see you again SF Actual, out.